Welcome guys, this is Israel again, and today we'll be doing role-based authorization in a .NET 6 API using JWT. But before we jump into the project, I do want to cover what are roles and how they are used in pair with JSON web tokens to authorize who's allowed to access what resources or endpoints in an API. Now let's dive into what are roles, how they are different than policies, and also how they work and are stored in a JWT. So what are roles? Roles are a set of permissions granted to users based on some status which allows them to access certain parts of an application based on that given role. An example could be a user that you have that is a manager at a company, while you can have someone that's just an employee. These are two different roles, and depending on the application, you should maybe only be able to access some parts of it depending on your given role. The role is something usually defined in the system or database and is stored as a claim inside the JWT, which is then given to the user when you log in. How are roles different from policies? Policies can be much more complex than a given role. A role can sometimes just be a term or something attached to a user or an account, while policies can be a set of rules that check various things before allowing you, you know, authorized access to a certain endpoint. Well, like I said, and in like the example that I show in this little picture, a role can just be, oh, you're a manager. Oh, you're an admin. Oh, you know, you're an employee. And that's all you need, while a policy can be a lot more. But we'll talk about that in a video that I'm going to do in the future about policies and using them with JWT. How do roles help with security? Roles help with security by allowing only certain people to see certain things. It's a quick way to categorize accounts and allow only the resources that a given role needs. Another example can be like if a company uses a certain application for entering their time, well, HR or the finance department might need access to everything for their jobs, while an employee may only need access to their given timesheet to just enter their time. But now, now that you know this and I've explained a little bit more about roles, let's actually dive into the code and how to actually use it in a .NET 6 API. Now that I've been able to go over what roles are as the definition, now let's actually see them in action in the code. But quickly, if you end up finding this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you drop a like on the video and subscribe so you don't miss any of the other lovely content. And if you would like to support me further, check out my Patreon or Linktree. Links are going to be in the description. This project will be a continuation of the project I used for this video right here, where I created this API project and showed you guys how to register and log in users and then create JWT tokens and then use them. If you want to watch that video first, then come back to this one. There will be a card right here. But if you want the code quickly, the link to my GitHub where this project is, is in the description as well. So go check out the project JWT app YT. But with that all being out of the way, now let's dive into roles within the current project. Let's dive in. Okay, so we're back at the project. Let me just quickly give a quick rundown of what this project was for anyone that maybe didn't watch the other full video or is just tuning back but has kind of forgotten because they watched the video a while ago. So quickly, this is just a very simple API. Let me just run it just so I can show you guys exactly what's in there. It is basically just a login, a register, and then it is just one method that just gives us a list of colors. So we can see here, we just have a login method, a register, and then the get color list. This is the one that we've kind of put the authorize and that's the one that we were testing to see if our JWT token even worked. Um, and here is where we're just registering a user. Then we log in with that given user. And then all we're doing is once we log in, we take that token, stick it in, you know, the header uh, as the bearer. And then that token was giving us access. But now let's expand upon that. Let's do a little bit more. Um, and before, again, I just want to show we have a login class, we have a register class, and then a user class. These are all just used um, for the various methods that we have up until this point. And then again, we just have this color list, which is just we just return a list of colors. That's all it is. There's nothing special to it. Um, but that is the project that we have right now. We do have our app settings with our secret that we were using for our token. And then our program, all we've done is just set the application settings here. We've added our JWT bearer and everything that we needed for JWT tokens. And then we've just added in this stuff here. And that is what we have right now. And now let's go ahead and add roles to this project. The first thing I want to go ahead and do is since now our user on registration and our user object is going to have a given role that, you know, in the real world, the company or the admin or whoever would assign them that role in the database or through the UI. However, you know, the project set up, they would have a given role. So a user will now need a role, um, you know, in the, in the user model. So let's go ahead and add that in. So we have our user and our user is now going to have a field of just a role. 
So now a user is going to have a role and also on register. We don't really have to give them a role on register, but it could be an option that when they're registering, you know, they're going to have their, they're going to, they might type in their role. They might select their role or it might be assigned to them. We don't know however it can go, but let's just put it in, in the register method. Um, and we, we can just add it in, but yeah. So basically whenever you're going to go ahead and we're going to see in a little bit, when you create your role, you want to basically have this role be in the claim for the role that they have, you know, in their token. So you want to be always pulling this value. So whenever you register or then you update someone going forward, their role changes, you want to be using that role so that whenever they are trying to access these resources, they can actually get them if there is obviously, you know, an authorization uh, role of blank. So they want to have that role and it needs to be there. So you have to add this field. So now that we've added the role to the user model, the next thing we want to do is we want to add the claim of that given role to our token because now the database and this model now contains, you know, our role here. So now we want to use this given role to create, you know, the claim and say like, okay, this is the role in the database. This is the role in the token so that they match up. And I'll show you guys because you can have multiple roles. And when you do here, you can decorate this authorized in different ways. You can have it to where you can have it be, oh, you can have either this role or this role, or you need to have two roles to be able to do that. We're going to go over that in a second. Um, but so the next thing that we would need to do inside of here is we need to add a new claim. It's going to be a claim type of role. So that's just going to specify that this is a role claim that we are adding. And then what we're going to do is right here where we're pulling the user that we're finding on login, we're going to do the user and then we're going to pick the role. So that role should be assigned and should be right there. So let's say that you had um, someone or you had a system where you could have someone could have multiple roles. Then at that point, you would have to do some type of like loop or something here to where you're adding into this claims identity list or you're, you know, adding, you're just adding to this list with how many claims or roles this user could have. But that would depend on your system. Since this is a very basic, you know, just user list that we're doing here. Um, I could just add a second claim here if I wanted to and just say, oh, like, I don't know. Um, like this person is also an admin. They have this role and then they're also an admin. So this person could be an employee and also an admin. Um, and we'll test that a little bit. But this is just going to be kind of like this is their role if they maybe in this system can only have one role. But if they can have, but they can have multiple roles and then you would just have to kind of append to this list and add them in um, while you're building this. Or you could do it outside, obviously. Okay, so now you've added this given role. And we're going to see kind of how to do this from Postman in a second. But now, okay, we have a role. So let's, you know, Oh, you know, stop someone from accessing this that doesn't have the set, the set role. So we're going to go into our items controller. And now that we're in here, what I want to do is I want to say authorize. And then we want to say roles. And if they're not an admin, I, I, I don't want them to access this. You know, they need to be an admin to get into this. If not, you know, don't, just don't let them in. Tell them they're not, you know, they're not allowed. Kick them out of the club. So now let's, we've done this. We've set up the role in here and we've gone in here and we set our claim. That is all that you have to do to set up roles in this. And now let's test it out using Postman. Let's run this and let me show you guys all this working in action. And right before we actually run this application, let me just add one thing that I actually forgot is that when we're creating this user, we actually need to add in their role here. So model dot role. So just a little, little error, but now let's continue on and let's actually run the application. Okay. So now that our application is working, I want to show you guys how roles work within this application. We're done with all the code changes. It's really not a lot of changes from the code that we already had. So now let's dive in with postman so I can properly show you guys how the roles work and how we can authorize and get, you know, the role within the token and all that stuff. So now let's go to postman. Let's open that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to post if you guys remember. So basically I'm only using my, my database is basically just this user list. Um, so I have to register login. And then obviously if I close the application, everything clears out. So every time, you know, I have to register a new user, I then log in with that user. And then once I log in, I get the token and then that token allows me to hit whatever endpoints I can because the, you know, the authorization, 
the authentication is all within there. So now let's go back to Postman. Let's register. I'm going to do my username, which is going to be my name. I've now added a role. So this is a difference from before. Now we need a role, and I'm setting him as admin and then our passwords. None of this has changed here. Let's now go to our code. So we had the one change of just admin here. So now they, they have a role. We return the object. We see that everything works the same. Now we're going to go and log in with the username and my name and our super secret password string. We're going to send. And now we're in here. We can see that string and Israel we found in our object in our um, on our in our list we, we found myself again and we see all the information was found perfectly so we were able to get down to the token to where we're now granting access like okay you are a real user you can log in and now the difference is we're adding this new claim at the end this claim with the role of admin and we're gonna see now and continue so we get this token back we have this token. So this was the JWT that we get back from our API. But how can we prove that the role is actually in there? So what you can do is you can actually take this token. You can go to right here, JWT.io. You can actually copy and paste this in. And if you see right here, this it shows you the algorithm they use it for. It tells you the type that it is. And then it actually gives you the object that's in there. So if you see here, it actually, let me post this. So it moves things. So it sees that my ID is my name, which was the username that I put in the subject. If you guys remember, if you go right here, it says my username, my ID. And then if you go back here, you can see that the role is in here. So it was encoded properly. So now that we go back here and can grab this token, if I go into this token, I grab it. And now we go to our get method, which we're going to hit the get color list. If you guys remember the get color list, is the method inside of this class that only allows admins in. So let's go into my authorization, my bearer token. Let me get rid of this token and let me copy over it. That is now this token. And now let's post. And now we've gone and retrieved our list. And as you can see, we were allowed in. So we're going to return this and it's actually going to give us our list back. But now how can I prove to you guys that, you know, this actually worked. Well, I can. I can show you guys that this actually works. So let me uh, just end this and restart it so that it clears out my user list. And now I'm basically going to create a user that's not an admin. So how can I do that? We're going to go in here. We're going to register. And instead of an admin, I'm going to call them just an employee. So I'm going to be just an employee now. Again, the role is an employee. Go through here. And we got all that back correctly. Let's log in over here. Let me get rid of this breakpoint because we don't need it. We can see again, the role is employee. It's going to come back. We now have this token and we can check it once more just to verify that everything is good here. We are now an employee. We are not an admin. And with this token now, make sure I copied it correctly. We can go back to this bearer token, put it in. And what this should do is it should not allow us to hit this endpoint because we are not actually an admin. So if we send, we can see that we're 403 forbidden. That means that this right here said, oh, your role is an employee. You are not allowed in here. You need to be an admin. So that is that is how you restrict based on a role. It's that simple. It is not super complicated. And I want to explain um, two little things next before we close this out. The thing I want to explain quickly is that you can actually have multiple of these tags. You don't need to restrict only by one thing. You can have multiple of these. You can say, oh, this has to be only, you know, an admin or a super admin. Or you can put in here, you can have, oh, not in here, this, or it can be, I don't know, HR. So HR. So the difference between these two right here. So just to understand and make it clear for you guys, because it can be kind of confusing, but it's kind of cool if you really were to need this type of kind of role based access and maybe people can have multiple roles or you need maybe to be, you know, I don't know, HR, but also a super admin to access something in here. You know, I don't know what critical it could be. But so basically, if you have this right here, this means that you can be an admin or an HR. So if you're just an HR, you can access this if you're an admin. So let's get rid of this. So imagine this was the only thing here. Let me just completely delete it. So let's say that was the only thing here. Well, you can be, this allows you to be an admin 
or HR. It doesn't say you have to be admin and HR. It says you can be one or the other. But let's say I added this back in. And let's just to make it a little clearer this. So this says that you have to be an admin and a super admin. You can't just be one or the other. This is basically an and. While this is an or. And that is a difference and something cool. And that's why I was saying, oh, well, what if you do get in a case where you have, I don't know, two here where you're like, oh, I'm an I'm an admin and I'm also HR. So this could be like, oh, you have two roles here. Well, if we had, I don't know, this and this. This would mean you need both roles. So what's going to happen here is I'm just going to this. This will not work um, because I'm not assigning a role here. So the roles for whatever I create is going to be admin and HR. And you're going to see what I mean where admin and HR is needed. But let's say that I add, I don't know, a third one here. Let's do that. So you have to also be a, a super HR. Well, obviously, since the way we have this set up, everyone that I create is going to be an admin and HR. They're not going to have all three of these roles. So if we quickly go through here and I just register, let me get rid of this breakpoint, continue, boom, created, Let's sign in. We're going to take this token and let me quickly show you what I've created. So you can see that we've created a role with an admin and an HR. So they have two roles, but this method, this method, this class wants three roles. And we're going to see that our two is not enough to get in here. So we're going to take our token and we're going to go back over here. We're going to post and it says 403 forbidden because we need all three. Like I said, this is an and basically logically. So it's like you need to be an admin and HR and super HR. But let's say I did this again, where we go back in here and we say HR. So this is what I said is an or. So if we go back into here and we just get rid of one of these, let's restart this. So now whoever I create is just going to be HR. We're not going to have an admin in here. So if we go back here, we register and now we log in. We're going to get another token. Let's confirm this token looks like we want it to be. Yes, you only have one role of HR, but that's fine because we set this now as an or you can be an admin or HR. So now when we actually log in with this token, let's replace it here again. And we're in and we actually got the list because we had just one or the other. And that is how you use role based authentication with JWT and a .NET 6 API with C sharp. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to drop a like and subscribe. And if you want to see, hey, how did we properly create the JWT tokens and get my full explanation on that? Well, check out the video that I mentioned earlier right here. And I'll see you guys at the next video.